you're watching the free version of this tutorial. Upgrade to premium for all footage and project and exclusive content. In exercise 6, we're going to have a look at some of the different ways we can use the tracking data that we've created in Mocha. Now, to start with, we are working in Adobe After Effects using the plugin version of Mocha Pro. But as before, as soon as we get into the Mocha interface, the export options are going to be pretty similar no matter which version you're working on. So let's come into Mocha itself. Now, I've just quickly transitioned to the standalone version of Mocha because the standalone has a couple of different things different to the plugin version. In the standalone version, we have open project and save project. So saving a project creates a file for us that we can then send around and open and do all the things we need to do with it. Now, the plugin version, we have a look back in here, that doesn't have open project at all. It does have save project, but this save project will save the Mocha data into the plugin again in the host. If you want to take out an external file, which we can share around or use later as a normal file, instead of going save project, we have to go export project. And this lets us save out to the .mocha format. What we can also do, even though we don't have an open project in the plugin version, we do have the shared ability as we do in the standalone to merge a project. This means I can take a previously saved project and open it up and this will merge in with the current open project. So in this way, I've now taken in all of the transform data that we had previously. Now, because we're taking out the tracking data, we're not really that interested in what the shape's doing. We're gonna to get to exporting out shape data at a later point. What we are interested in is what the surface is doing because the surface here is going to be the tracking data that we take out. If I have this layer selected and I go to export tracking data, we get a list of the various compatible formats we can take out. So at the top we have After Effects, then we have Assimilate Scratch, Autodesk, Avid, Fusion, Forest Effects, HitFill, Mocha Blend, Motion, Nuke, Quantel, Shake, the list goes on as you can see. So we have to decide now what type of data we're taking out. So now we find our host. And in this case, I'm gonna be taking this out to After Effects. And After Effects has four different types of tracking data that we can take out just using this one layer. In the first instance, let's just look now at taking out transform data. So this is gonna be position, scale, and rotation data. So once we've chosen our format, we can choose to invert it, and the reasons for doing so we will look at in a future exercise, or we can remove lens distortion, and you'll understand why that's important once we have a look at the lens module. But for now, we'll leave both of these turned off. And we can save this now out as a text file, and this is required to use the formats for several of the hosts, but not After Effects, where we can just copy this to the clipboard. Now, what has it copied to the clipboard? Well, let's have a little look, shall we? Let's just exit this. Let's just exit, saving our changes, and see what we can do. And we create a new solid. It's 250 by 250, and make it bright green so you can't miss it. Lovely. So to use our track data in After Effects, we just have the layer selected, come up to Edit, and because we've got the track data copied to the clipboard, we can just go Paste. And if I set up my work range and then play this back, this will paste the position, scale, and rotation data onto the layer. And if we didn't want the rotation or the scale to go on, well, we can just turn off keyframes on those and right click and just reset. Cool. And then we have our position still here. So where does After Effects take the position point? Well, let's pop into Mocha one more time and see exactly where it takes it from. Come over to our wall track. It's taking it from the center of our surface. So if we change the position of the surface, let's move that there. You can see in the middle of the surface, we have our crosshair. Let's export this tracking data now. Copy that to the clipboard one more time. 
the only thing we changed, exit and save again. And come back to our green solid and just paste over the old data. So now we have the same tracking data just offset to match the position of the surface. Now there's a lot of fun stuff we can do with that. But for now, let's come over to another good friend of ours, which is this telephone. Remember when we were looking at the adjust track and we wanted to insert this insert into it? Well, let's do that now. So let's apply our Mocha Pro. Yeah, so let's just come in now and merge this with the project that we created in Exercise 3. There we go. So we've got our screen one track. Just scrub that through, make sure that is looking all right. Yep, so we've got a little insert there. Excellent. So let's export out this tracking data now. And because we're doing a screen insert with this, we don't want to take this out as transform data. We want to take this out as corner pin data. And again, we're going to After Effects, so we have a few different corner pins to choose from. At the top, we have After Effects CS3 corner pin. That's not Creative Cloud. This is a very old version of After Effects now, and it handled non-square pixels in a different way than newer versions of After Effects does. So if you're working on CS3 or below, then this is the one you want to choose. Otherwise, we can look at the other two. So the first one we have, the After Effects corner pin, is just straight corner pin data. And the primary reason for using this is because of the compatibility with the Red Giant Warp plugin and Mama World's very useful Mocha Import plugin. And the third version of this After Effects corner pin is the one that supports After Effects native motion blur. And this is the one that we're going to go for. And as before, we can save this out, but we'll just copy this to the clipboard. Let's come out of the Mocha Pro plugin and save that. So now we've got the insert tracking data copied into our clipboard. We're going to need the thing we're going to insert over the top. And that's going to be this little graphic here. So with that layer selected, I'm going to come up, edit, paste. And something strange has happened. It's pasted it in. It's looking almost right, except for one important detail is that it is offset and not in the right place at all. And the reason for that, if I just undo that, there's one big reason for that. And that's because in After Effects, we need to have our insert layer exactly the same size as the composition layer is. And if it's not, we need to pre-compose it. So I can right click on the clip, go to pre-compose. I'll move all attributes into the new composition, open this new composition and hit OK. Cool. Now you can see we've got a new comp that is exactly the same size as the previous comp. We can have a look at that. We have a look at our composition settings, 1920 by 1080. Lovely. And now right click on the footage one more time, go transform. And we go fit to comp and this will stretch it out so it fits the composition size. Now once that's done, we can come back into our main composition. And remember our Mocha data is still sat in the clipboard, so we hit paste. And that will now fit in absolutely fine. So this is only an issue if your insert footage isn't the same size and the same ratio as your main composition layer. Now that's one way of doing the insert. And that's the traditional way of doing the insert when you're working with the standalone version of Mocha or Mocha AE. Now the other way of doing it is available to us if we're working with the plugin version. And it doesn't matter what host we're working with. In fact, just to show you that, let's go into Premiere for a second. And here we are in Premiere with exactly the same piece of footage. Let's apply our Mocha Pro filter and go into it. We'll do the same things we did previously, merge the project to find the data that we wanted. And we'll use screen track one. Let's turn on the surface, turn off the transform box, and we can turn off our outlines as well. Let's come to our layer properties and go insert clip. And let's import that phone screen JPEG one more time. We can leave all of these at the default settings, hit OK on that. And we'll just play that back to make sure everything's looking all all right. Yep, that's looking fine. 
good stuff okay so let's come in and we'll hit save on that and exit no i hear you great ben everything's looking exactly the same where's our screen gone when do we do the copy and paste well we don't come back over to the plugin and open up our module renders and we can click on render to render these modules directly with the mocha plugin so we can do the insert composite we can do the insert cutout which is only going to show us the cutout and not the background but for now we'll just look at the insert composite as we have it here and we'll just render that out and a few seconds later depending on your system you will have a nice clean render so if you're using the plugin version of Mocha, you can have a very clean timeline indeed just by using the module renders directly within the plugin. Cool. Well, one other thing you can do if you're working with the plugin version of Mocha is to use this insert layer to choose what layer you're inserting directly within the host. So let's see how that works. What you have to do is make sure that when you're in Mocha, these have the layer selected where we've got our surface for the screen insert, come down to our layer properties and on the insert clip, we go to insert layer and you can either do it in the layer properties here or as we'll see in the later exercise in the insert module itself and once we've done that what i'm going to do is just save and exit and back in premiere we've lost our screen insert and that's because our insert layer is set to none if i change that now and change it to layer two for example it's going to be set to black because there's nothing in layer two as it stands but have a look over here. With our third clip, we have a mosaiced and stretched version of our original screen insert. If I just bring that up over the top, we now have Video Track 2 inserted over our phone. And we'll quickly render that out. And you can see just how easy it's going to be to make those sort of changes directly within the host editing application. Because if you need to update what's going on inside the screen there, it's just a simple case of replacing the material on the appropriate track. And we'll leave it there as our first look at using the Mocha tracking data. We've looked at exporting the tracking data directly from Mocha Pro and using it in After Effects for transforming and a corner pin. But we've also seen how we can start to use the built-in rendering with the Mocha plugin to quickly set up our inserts. And simplicity of this is great if you're mainly a video editor and you don't want to have to worry too much about having lots and lots of different layers cluttering up your timeline. You've got everything contained within the single layer. In the next exercise, we're going to see how we can use the same data to do stabilization and how we can tweak those results using the stabilized module. So I'll see you over in exercise seven.